Wow. Good evening. You guys are so fortunate this evening, I'm gonna tell you why. Because you get to hear something concerning Muskegon Hikes at the beginning of your day, and then we're coming right back at you at the end of your day. The piece that you heard probably at the beginning of the day was probably a little more warm fuzzy. Me, I'm very rarely politically correct, and I'm just more of a hard hitter. So if you would just allow me for a moment just to be who I am and allow me just to kind of flow. The whole note cards and it's not me. I haven't slept in probably about two days preparing for this thing. So, and then I've kind of over the on coffee. So I got these jitters, not along, along with the nerves. So bear with me and I guarantee you won't be um, left behind. The images that are coming up before you, you're probably thinking why those images and what's the relevancy of them in her um, speech. Some of these images here that you see, I, I wanted to give you a glimpse into my mind, if you will. Many times these are the images that I go through. Those are the questions that I ask myself before I step into a presentation like this. Because the people that I represent, starting at the age, at the third grade level, we're already determining if they will be convicts and how many beds we need to put them in coming forward. So what part of the thing that I want to talk to you today is weed and seed. How do we stop that process? What types of things do we look at to better um, flow our community? What can we do to put Muskegon County on the map to make this a place that's um, warm and loving for all those environs, regardless of race, regardless of age, regardless of any of those things that we sometimes take for granted? So I'm going to start with you. My name is Kimberly Sims. Many of you probably know that. Some of you don't. Um, I'm an avid homeschooler. And so probably about nine years ago when my husband determined that I was gonna come home, my thought was woohoo, I get to go home, hang out with the girls, have lunch, get my nails done, pedicure. I thought something totally different. We never knew that we were gonna homeschool. So of course, me being who I am, wanted to take homeschooling and just really embrace it. Give my kids all the experiences and really teach them things that they weren't gonna get traditionally, right? So my thing was, I'm gonna plant a garden. So one of the things I did when I planted a garden, I called my Aunt Blanche. Some of you may know her. I love her to death. And I planted this garden, and I'm excited. My garden is starting to grow, and there was this little cucumber plant growing out, and I'm raking around it, and I'm tending to it, and I'm thinking, yeah. Months went by, nothing. And so my aunt called me, and she said, so what's going on with your garden? I was like, I don't know what's going on. She comes over to the house, let me look at it. She takes my cucumber plant, so I thought, and she rips it up. I was devastated. I'm thinking, how can you do that? I've been tending to that thing for two months. Now my cucumbers are never coming up. You don't know what you're doing. And she looked at me and she was like, sweetheart, there's a weed. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, that's a who? She said, that's a weed. You will never get anything if you continue to let that grow. And I tell you what, she knew what she was talking about. Probably about mm, a couple days later, I started seeing little buds coming up everywhere. I was like, well, go figure out, Blanche. She knew exactly what she was saying. I'm a person of acronyms, and so part of my talk is weed and seed. So when I look at weed, some of the things that I think of, what is a weed? To me, looking at it in the context of this conversation, is wasted energy encouraging destruction. That's what a weed is. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in this conversation talking to you about the weeds that are found in my community, because there are many other outlets that allow that to happen. I'm gonna spend time today talking about the seeding portion and what it is that you all can do to help us rebuild the city of Muskegon Heights to the prominence that it, it once was. Some of the weeds we talk about, um, I'm gonna say are conversations. How do we talk about things when we're talking about them? Many of the kids, when the, we were going through the whole turmoil within our um, city regarding the school district, they heard conversations regarding, we don't want those students at our school. We don't want those, we don't want them. So to me, the conversation didn't really, really enforce or celebrate who they were. They began to see themselves as those kids and them, taking the humanness out of it. So conversation, programming that we do in our county, we have some awesome programming. But sometimes I have to stop to wonder and think, the programming that we offer, does it teach them independence or does it further foster dependency? Because many times when you have a program and it fosters dependency, that weed aspect can grow deeper and go deeper and, find, and take root and becomes that much harder to get out. So now, me and my acronyms again, SEEDS. What are SEEDS then? I look at SEEDS as being sustainable encounters empowering destiny. That's what SEEDS are. Those things that we put into a community that give life, that bring life, that fosters the ability for a, a, a community to thrive and grow. That's what this county needs. Because if we continue to foster the weeds that are in Muskegon Heights, 
trust me, it's only gonna be a matter of time before, like that cucumber plant, I thought, grows and starts to choke the life out of any and everything else that we're doing in this county. So, some of the things, this is the part that I get most excited for, because these are things that are going on in our community that many times are left untold. These are things that I call seedlings, and I call them seedlings because of what they're starting to change. It's starting to change the environment. It's starting to help people with a different mindset. It's starting to open up thoughts that people in our community never had before. That's the positive of it. One of the things, CIS Properties, LLC. He was an investor that came to us by way of Chicago. Mr. Sis bought this home here. It's in one of our more stable communities, actually right off on, on Maffet Street. Um, and he rehabbed the entire house, gutted it, front and back. New plumbing, brand new roof, the whole thing. His goal was to put a young family into it to start stabilizing the community. Because what we have right now in our community is most of our population is over the age of 60 and between the age of 16. So we kind of have none of that middle class, that age group that kind of balances our community. So his goal, he saw, was to come in, put a young family into this home and to begin changing and stabilizing the neighborhood. That's the first one that he did. Then he went to the second one. This one is one of the ones that is most amazing to me because this was on the city's demolition list, okay? If you can imagine where that fence is there, on that far end, if you can imagine a tree growing out of that fence, the roof had caved in, it was on the demolition list. He came to us as a city and he said, what about if I buy the property from you, rehab it and put a family in it? Currently this family, and as you can see, there's um, a car there. He just got rid of this property, not got rid of, but he just sold this property, I apologize. And it's a five bedroom, three bath home that he completely rehabbed and it's a family in it. As a result of him doing that property, the house next door to it, the man who was um, going to give up his house, just walk away from it, decided, you know what, I can do something with that house. Then it continued to grow, and as you see now, we have a whole half a city block that's being stabilized in our community because of the one vision that this one man had. <sighs> our diamond in the rough, our Mona Lake Park. This is one of the things where I say we completely embrace the county in this one. This wasn't just about Muskegon Heights when we developed this park, redeveloped it. Phase one, excuse the pictures here, I couldn't find any really good ones. But this one here that you see in phase one, we actually constructed a fishing house, fish cleaning station and bathrooms, a walkway, a new boat deck. That's a much better picture, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Um, that's our boat, our, our fishing pier there um, that Every day, you can go out there and see people actually fishing off that pier now. The one before we had had kind of caved in, and so we're starting to revitalize the area. That was phase one. Phase two in Mona Lake Park is the one we just had the ribbon cutting ceremony for, where we took the whole other side of the park, redesigned all the basketball courts, put in a soccer field, softball field. We've had our little league field revitalized, and we just got a grant. Oh, yes. I love grants. We just got a grant that allowed us to put in a softball field. That's where you see the red circle. Who in Muskegon Heights do you know play soccer? Yep, nobody's shaking. Yep, there's not many. Okay, baseball, this gives the whole county an opportunity to come and use this park that's located in Muskegon Heights. So when the council, when we put our thinking caps on and we developed this park, it was to encompass the broader community, to bring people into our city, to be able to enjoy our city. Just like we go to Heritage Landing from our community and enjoy that, we wanted a way for other citizens to come to our, our community and enjoy that as well. We have businesses that are longtime businesses that have been in our community for forever, and they are continually investing. These two are what I call ceiling. This is quality tool and stamping. They, they work alongside with Web Chemical, and they took it up on themselves to say, you know what, we really need to do something with that Sherman Street corridor, because that's where both of those businesses are located. And so they, their thing was, what can we do? So they started to do some different streetscape, move some things around to really start to be able to welcome people as they come into Muskegon Heights on Sherman. I'm always excited about little things like that. So what do I think that it needs to happen in order for our community to begin to thrive again? Whoever told you all that you couldn't live in Muskegon Heights? I'm just curious. Many times what happens is, when I, what I think happens is this, again, it's just my theory. When white flight took place, not only did the resources and the people leave, but they took intellect as well. 
So what you have is right now in a situation in Muskegon Heights when you have a graduation rate that's plummeting, when you have the degree holding people. Now mind you, my husband and I both own, we both hold degrees. We're actually in Muskegon Heights because of what I'm talking to you about today. We're in Muskegon Heights because we believe that the children in that community need to see people putting on suits and going to work. They need to see uh, people working hard every day. They need to see people and conversate with those with people who have experiences outside of their own. That's why we live in Muskegon Heights, and that's why I think other people should consider it as well. Then we need people who could work in Muskegon Heights. When you live and you work in a place, then it kind of begins to feel like home. It's more, you know, kumbaya-ish, if you will. <laughs> then we also, well, Mona Lake. It's obvious, a great place to play. So when you have a community by which you can live, work, and play, our business district is set up for urban entrepreneurial thought. That's why I was so excited about this opportunity today, because not many times do I get to sit or stand, in this case, before people with an open mind to, to grasp new ideas and to think about something different. And so I'm hoping when I'm done that you might think about my community just a little bit differently. And I believe that if we can get people to live, work, and play, I didn't even use these, did I? Waste of time. So I believe, honestly, <laughs> If we can get people to live, work, and play in our community, Muskegon Heights can be the epitome of what an urban community, a community should and could be. We in this county would be able to send a strong message to the, the whole state of Michigan to say, look, this is how it's done. This right here is what works. So I couldn't really figure out, because I wanted this to be more of a conversation, more of a dialogue, but it sounded like, okay, well, how do you do that? So what I'm going to do you, to you right now is just to give you some questions for consideration. One, yeah, I thought that was cute, just going to kind of drop it on you. <sighs> do we have a mindset about things before we even give them a chance? And I, I mean, I really want you all to take some of this opportunity just to kind of do some self-introspection. If you want to share with me after, great, because I would love to talk to you. And if you choose not to, that's okay too. But I really want you all to take this opportunity to look inside yourself and really ask some tough questions, because that too is one of the things that I feel like Muskegon County is missing, and that's that tough conversation regarding race. Next question, How, what do we tell our children by the way we choose to live? Every day, I look at my sons, my two boys. I'm getting ready to graduate one, yes. And then I have a five-year-old. So um, I look at my two boys every day, and I want them to see and I want them to feel my passion for their community. I don't want them to leave home and decide that they're never coming back to Muskegon again. I want them to be able to take what I'm instilling in them so strongly grow with it, and then be able to come back and give something to this community. Then the next question is, do we live what we say we believe? There's a lot of good talk. A lot of good talk. I hear it often. And trust me, this talk isn't just for you. There are some things that I have to work on myself with as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you just like I'm talking to myself. Do we really say, do live the way we say and believe? And then the last question, whoever told you you couldn't live in Muskegon Heights? How powerful would it be for a little boy to be walking down the street and to see a lady who owns a public relations company? What is that? You see, what, how powerful would it be for a judge or a lawyer to live in our community? That used to be. And then to be able to say, oh yeah, that's judge so-and-so. What message would that send to our children? Well, that's all I have for you. I want to thank you all very much for your time, and I hope to see you soon in the Stephen Heights.